Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Adventure Boat. My name is Kelly. Today I am finally installing my C4 Fab hybrid bumper and my Ironman winch on my 2020 Tacoma. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel guys. So the reason that I chose the C4 Fab hybrid bumper over the ocean of other options out there as far as winch bumpers is the looks. I really like the way the C4 Fab hybrid bumper looks on the third gen Tacomas. I think it's just super sharp and just really accentuates the lines of the truck. I also went with the high hoop for the protection and not to uh, interfere with the front facing camera and the active cruise control sensor that's behind the emblem. The biggest drawback, of course, to having this bumper is cutting the front bumper. More cutting on my truck. And you know that Trevor and I are huge Ironman fans, and this was actually the very first thing that Trevor and I purchased from Ironman. We saw those guys at Overland Expo in 2019, and we actually got a great deal on these. So we, picked, we each picked one up. Trevor's been running his for over a year, and it's been great. Uh, I have yet to install mine, so today is the day. Step one is going to be popping the hood and removing the front grille. Remove this clip here, this bolt here, this bolt here, and this clip here. To remove this clip, stick a flathead screwdriver in here, pull up on the middle, pull the whole thing straight out. And these two bolts are a 10 millimeter. With those fasteners out, we're just gonna pull it straight out. Oh, got a wire attached. There's two harnesses in here that are attached. Just pinch the fasteners and push them through. I completely forgot about my active cruise control, all the front facing sensor behind the grill. There's a big plug here. Push the plug together and then pull it apart. And it's free. Now we're gonna mark where we're gonna make our cuts. And the first line we're gonna make is the elongation of this line right here in the body panel. The second mark is going to be where this body seam meets this edge here. We're gonna go six inches straight down. Our third and final mark is going to be three and an eighth inches going from the body seam up against the fender flare here down the fender flare. And now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna double and triple check all these measurements to make sure that they are correct. Now with all three of these lines double and triple checked, I'm gonna run a piece of tape, make a tape line for us to cut. So I went through and remeasured all three points and they are spot on. I'm gonna take a razor blade and just mark through the fender. That way the fender can be separated from it. This side is good. I'm gonna go do the other side and then we'll move on. I've gotten both sides marked. I have marked them, double checked, triple checked. I put a long level up along both tape lines to make sure they're nice, straight and level. Um, these edges are typically not covered, they're open, so definitely do your very, very best to make sure that they are straight and perfect because you really only have one chance to make that cut right. All right, moving on. Now we're going to loosen all the fasteners to remove the bumper cover. We're gonna begin by disconnecting the fog light. All we're gonna do is press down on the top and pull apart. We also have to disconnect this tab so this harness can go with the cover. And all you do is from the underneath side, depress the sides and push it up. And this clip just pinches this way to pull it out. Next, we're gonna remove the bumper cover here. So we have to remove these clips. It's one, two, three, four, five, six on the front. And then there's a couple in the wheel wells. Let's get these first. Working on the inside of the wheel well, we're gonna remove this plastic clip here, taking a screwdriver, just prying it out. Now we use our screwdriver and just kind of pry this out a little bit, just to separate the fender liner from the fender itself. 
Now we're going to use a 10 millimeter socket and remove this bolt here. Now working under the bumper cover, we're going to remove all of the bolts underneath. And then the last clip and the last bolt. And I am missing the last clip. Must have fallen out in all of my fender swapping. I'm going to grab the bottom of the inner fender liner here and I'm just going to pull it back and tuck it up under the tire. There, just need it out of the way just a little bit. With the 35s, I don't have as much room to work with. We have to separate the fender flare from the bumper cover. And all we're gonna do is kind of reach behind here. There's these little plastic tabs. And we're just going to turn them sideways and straighten them out to be able to pull them out. These are the tabs here, you just straighten them out and they'll pull right out. The next step is going to be removing the bumper cover and only thing that's holding this on right now are push clips. So all I have to do is give it a lot of force and pull it off. We're gonna start pulling from the passenger side and we're just gonna pull this thing and just kind of notch it all the way off. The very first thing we're gonna do is extend this tape line so we know where to cut. Next, I'm gonna remove this entire wiring harness for the fog light system. I'm not gonna reuse it. Um, I'm gonna wire the lights individually, so this has to go. All you're gonna do is take your fingers, press down on these clips, and then pull from the bottom. Next, I'm gonna remove all these clips. All you're basically doing is gonna straighten them out and push them through. And by doing that, you can see I'm loosening up this entire housing here. Now I'm gonna remove the fog lights and unplug it, just push down on the bottom and pull the harness straight out. Now with the screwdriver, I'm going to go through and I'm going to pry all of these out. All you're doing is prying and push a little and these will pop out. Then I'm going to be doing that across this entire panel here to pop the center section out completely. And it's free. Once again, I am cutting the body of my pretty much brand new Tacoma. Um, I really, really hate this part. However, it needs to get done, so let's just do it. All I'm going to do is the cut line that I have made here, I'm gonna follow. I'm using a body saw, I personally get straighter lines with a body saw over a cutoff wheel. Um, everyone has different preferences. I'm just more comfortable with this. So this is what I'm using. Any little discrepancy in the edge, I can clean up with a sanding disc. So not a big deal, sorta. What I'm going to do is take my body saw and I'm going to cut along the bottom of the tape line here. Once I get into the deep crevice of this, then I'm gonna cut across and I'm basically just going to angle this down right here and then I'm going to cut just the top of the tabs here. And this right here will be a flat straight across line. So this cut came out pretty good. It's a little off right here, and then I got back on about here. Luckily it's lower than the line, not above the line, so I can just sand it down. It's just hard with the angles with the camera but uh, is what it is. Moving on to the next side. All right, we've got two pieces. 
and this one is going away. Now I'm going to go through with the sander disc and kind of clean all these edges up. All I'm doing is making sure with my eye that this looks nice and straight, follows the tape line, and it's nice and smooth. And here's the final cut line. It looks really good. I also used alcohol and a paper towel and wiped the Sharpie mark off. I'm gonna get this side finished up, then we'll move on. Now we're going to make the cut across the fender flare with the body saw. I'm just going to pull the flare off the truck a little bit and make my cut. Time to clean up the edge. I switched from using sandpaper to one of these Scotch-Brite pad things. I don't know what they're called, but I will put a link to all the tools I used in the description below. So the fender is cut and you can see right here this part of this bracket is totally exposed. This fender part is going to get cut away, so all this will be tucked up underneath. So I do have to cut this right here, and I might actually just cut it from the inside. C4 Fab recommends you remove this bracket, but I think I can sneak the body saw in behind it and just cut it without hitting the metal of the uh, fender right here. Let's give it a shot. As you can see, the plastic part still protrudes a little bit and this metal part also sticks out. So I'm just gonna surgically trim this so that it's nice and hidden away. Now this looks way cleaner with nothing hanging down. Now I'm gonna take a razor knife with a brand new blade and I'm basically going to trim the fender liner just kind of following the body all the way to here. Now how good does all this look? All nice and clean. I just finished the driver's side and I definitely think it came out a lot better looking. The fender just kind of folded into place better. I did have to use two bolts. I didn't use any self tappers because there's a wiring harness that runs right across where the uh, mounting goes and I didn't want anything to happen to that. So I ended up using bolts. That way there's no sharp edges there. So this side is done and we're moving on to removing this big aluminum block, which is actually the structural portion of the bumper. These are just shock absorbers using a 14 millimeter socket to remove this bolt, this bolt, and then this bolt on each side. While we're over here, I'm gonna use a 17 millimeter socket on this bolt here to remove this plate here. Using a 17 millimeter socket, I'm gonna remove this block here and this factory tow hook. Now we're gonna unbolt the two bolts that hold the brackets to this oil cooler line so that we can move this back and forth. We're actually gonna recess this in for more clearance for the winch. And there's also one bolt on the side that kind of holds this line. We have to loosen that also. Right behind the mud guard is that bolt there that needs to come out. Now we can push it back and move on to the next step. In the included hardware, we're going to be tapping into these brackets here. Obviously they are laser etched with passenger and driver, and they actually go on the vehicle so you can read those the same as they are here. And we're going to be using the included hardware, the smaller bolt and nuts. Working on the passenger side with the laser cut bracket that says the P. And all we're going to do is we're gonna lift the oil cooler up, place the bracket underneath, and drop the bolt through. 
put the nut on from underneath. It's only going on finger tight. Now the next side. Now we've got the brackets in and situated. Everything's loose. Factory hardware. We're gonna put these back on. I'm using a 12 millimeter wrench to tighten it down because of the clearance. You wanna make sure that this oil line is not impacting this bolt. And you also wanna make sure that this oil line here isn't touching the radiator. So I gotta pull this back just a pinch. And now I'm gonna tighten up the inside bolt. The aftermarket hardware is 13 millimeter and I don't have a ratcheting 13 millimeter wrench. So I have to do this one by hand also. All right, clearance is good. Let's do the other side. All the prep work has been completed. The only thing that we might have to do later is notch out in this bracket here for the winch clearance, but I think we're gonna be okay. I kind of took a quick measurement. I think we'll be all right. Now we're gonna put on what's left of the bumper. Installation is going to be the same as the removal, just in opposite. On these edges here, just make sure they're lined up and then press in. Don't forget to press in on your fender right here. There's a clip that you had pulled out. Time to reinstall the push clips. Don't forget if you're gonna reuse your factory driving light harness to plug that in. I'm not using it though. Time to install the front grill. All we're gonna do is index it off the bottom. You wanna make sure that you index these tabs into that front bumper. Work it in from the bottom. Make sure you reinstall the tab and the bolts on each side. And also do not forget to reconnect your smart sense, the sensor behind the emblem. All the hard work of prepping this for the bumper to go on is finally done. However, before I actually put the bumper onto the truck, I need to install the winch. And the very first thing you have to install is the fair lead. The fair lead goes into the fair lead hole, button head bolt, lock washer, flat washer. And that goes on the back, 19 millimeter socket. When installing the winch into the bumper, make sure that you have the controls to the winch facing forward, not backwards, because that would be wrong. Push the rope through the fair lead, that way it is at least indexed in there, it doesn't get stuck underneath it. And now we're going to take these large square nuts and we're gonna insert them on the insides of each post where they mount. And now using the longer bolts, we're gonna do lock washer, flat washer, and insert from the bottom. And you insert underneath, just move the winch around, find the hole, put it on hand tight. For the front two bolts to get to the winch from underneath, you have to flip this whole thing forward in order to access them from the very, very bottom. With the winch basically indexed all the way forward because of the steep angle that it's at, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it down. That'll give you the most amount of clearance that'll push this winch as far forward as it'll go. Just found out the bolts are actually 5 8 so you wanna use a 5 8 socket. The time has finally come to install the bumper. Now the fair lead and the winch are the only thing that I've gotten installed on here. I'm hoping that I can access all the power cables after I get it on. So right now we're gonna lift this up I'm gonna use my son to help me and we're gonna get this thing on here. One, two, three, go. Let's try and do driver's side first. Since that's the hang-up side. Well, it's impacting here. You can see it scratched the shit out of it. All right, ready? One, two, three, up. Oh, movement! Woo! Who had that brilliant plan? Who was the one got it, who got it on? Me and Dad. <laughs> you guys can let it go. You don't think I helped? Ooh, that makes me nervous. Yeah, that's a little loud. Good? 
walk away quickly. <laughs> <laughs> the bumper is on and it looks so damn good. Uh, I don't know why, the first time we tried to put it on, it didn't want to go on. It was kind of impacting into the grill on the sides, on both sides, and it just wouldn't go all the way in. It was, it was stopped, and I thought maybe the grill wasn't pushed in all the way because it, it chewed the crap out of the grill right here. But uh, we took it down and looked at everything. Everything looked like all the clips were pushed in all the way. Everything looked good. So we tried it again, and it went on. So I don't know why it didn't go on the first time, but it's on now, which is great. And it looks amazing. However, not done. Still gonna bolt everything in. It's just kind of sitting here with a couple of nuts on threads. So let's get that done now. For the three front facing bolts, we're reusing the stock nuts, but we're adding grade eight washers. Now we're using a 14 millimeter socket to tighten them down. Now these are just snugged. Now we're going to add in Now watch what happens as I tighten this bottom bolt. All right, the bumper is mounted solid and this thing is awesome. I cannot believe how cool this looks, how sturdy it is. I was actually nervous about the top bar. I didn't know if I wanted the big hoop. Um, I'm glad I got it. Super cool. I really like the way it looks, very functional. This thing is just beefy looking. So if you're here just for the C4 Fab hybrid bumper, this is it. It's installed. It's awesome. It's badass. However, if you're here for the winch also, there's definitely still more to be done. I have to wire the winch. Let's do that now. Wiring up the winch is actually quite easy. There's not a whole lot to it. This is the control box. This is the, the long red wire is going to be the positive to the battery terminal. And I am going to wire it directly to the battery because it is a big draw. Also, there is a, a yellow shunt on the winch. This black cord with the yellow top goes to that. The black shunt gets the black cable with the black hat on it. And then there's a red shunt and the red cable with the red hat little thing goes on there, goes to that one. It's super easy. There's also a long black cable that's the negative and that basically the ground uh, goes on the other side. It's this cable and that cable goes into the ground. Honestly, the most difficult part of this uh, wiring process is going to figure out where this big box is gonna land. It's really great that they don't attach it to the winch. It allows you to have a lot of clearance uh, availabilities and a big range of bumpers you can put this in. However, figuring out where this box is gonna go is not gonna be easy. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to drop the bumper to get this wired up. I'm just not able to access everything. The box won't fit where I want it to go and I'm having a hard time just kind of visualizing everything because it's so dark and everything's kind of tight in there. So I'm just gonna make it easy on myself. I'm gonna pull the bumper off. I'm gonna wire the whole thing on the ground and then put it up and connect the two wires. So I've actually decided to mount this on this crossbar right here. And I'm gonna mount it on the bottom holes. Uh, this is plastic. It's got a little weight to it, but it should be totally fine. Make sure to protect the steel. Using the stock hardware, mount it up. Now that the module is all mounted up, I'm just gonna put the main power cable wire that's going to the battery up, and then just kind of leave these hanging down. Then we're gonna mount the bumper. Now we're going to remount the bumper and get this wired up and then call this thing done. Now I'm gonna run through the whole uh, leveling, putting it back on, mounting it, getting everything all nice and flush and flat. It's pretty good. Um, it just takes time getting it just perfect. All right, now for the wiring of the winch itself. I'm not gonna be able to show you this at all, but just I'll walk you through it. All I'm doing is gonna pull out the three wires. This is the black wire with the yellow hat on it and it correlates to the stud or the shunt with the yellow little I don't know, marking on it. Pretty self-explanatory. I'm just gonna pull them all out, make sure nothing's crimped behind there. All right, I've got all three pulled out, black, red, and yellow. 
And now I'm just gonna attach them to the associated shunts. So black is on there, now I'm gonna do red. And I'm putting yellow on. All three are on, and now I'm gonna tighten them down. I've got the three top ones all tightened down. Now I just gotta put the boots over them and then do the ground. On the very bottom is the ground nut. And it basically hooks into this little tiny cable and then the big thick ground wire that goes to the battery. They both go into the little nut in the very bottom here. Here's all three wires with the boots on. And then right here in the bottom, you can just barely see it. That is the nut for the ground wire. And that was a test of patience. I almost forgot to install the breather hose. Now this is basically a hose to allow the winch to work when it's underwater, which is perfect because there's tons of water in the desert. Just kidding, we go north quite a bit. But uh, this end goes on the little nub where the breather hose goes. And then this goes high, as high as you can get it in the engine compartment. And I'm gonna try to run it all the way back into the firewall. That way there's less likely of a water to kind of submerge over it if I do a major water crossing. And fun fact, a lot of dudes will run these out up the snorkel to the top of the snorkel too. Maybe one day. This is the end of the breather hose and I pulled it through. There's no way I'm gonna be able to show you the uh, how that goes into the winch. It's just like a one-way nipple that pushes, the rubber hose pushes on there and it's good to go. Meanwhile, I routed it all the way up and I'm gonna put it way back here in the firewall and I'm gonna zip tie it right here, out of the way. Now I'm gonna fish the positive and negative big thick wire cables all the way to the battery and get them hooked in. I was able to route the power and the cable kinda behind the light bezel here, out and around. My power cable actually is able to wrap around the battery. I don't have to go straight to it to kind of hide it. I'm gonna tap it in here, and then my negative is I'm able to put into my negative fuse block here that I use for my bow switch. Finally, after about nine and a half hours, I've got everything wired up. I'm fairly confident it's gonna work. Now, this is the Iron Man remote. It comes where you can use either corded or cordless. And when you use it cordless, you have to put in this little, I don't know, wireless communicator thing into where the cable usually goes. So let's do that. <laughs> hey, hell yeah, it works. Ah, so cool. I don't know what I'm gonna do at the end of this yet. I don't know if I'm gonna, get, gonna use the factory hook or do something different. So I'm just gonna leave this uh, kind of like this for now. But uh, yeah, I can't believe it works. It's, well, I can't believe it works. I did it, of course it's gonna work. But yeah, it works, I'm so excited. All right guys, that install took about, like I said, about nine and a half hours. I bet you could probably do it in about six hours in your garage. It wasn't terribly difficult. Um, I would, I had to redo take the bumper off, put the winch on, and then put it back on. And it would have been a lot easier to have just done something a little bit different than what I did, probably to wire everything up and then put the box on after. Um, it was just trying to get everything on while the winch was in the bumper was really, really difficult and very time consuming. Yeah, other than that, this freaking bumper is badass. I love the way it looks. It totally just sets the truck off. All right, finally, I've got my bumper, I've got my winch, I am good to go. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hoped you liked this install. Remember, if you like this video, hit like. Be sure to subscribe. It really does help Adventure Built grow. Follow us on IG. It's Adventure Built underscore. We'll see you guys next time.